welcome to the Marketing Optimist uh, latest webinar. Uh, this one is in conjunction with Greg Priest, and it's called YouTube Marketing Explained. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about Marketing Optimist first. Um, we, this is our sixth year. Uh, we're just about to celebrate our sixth birthday in, on the 5th of May. Bad timing. I should have caught, I should have uh, sort of the business out on the 4th of May, then we could have done a whole Star Wars thing a day late, never mind. Um, and we are a digital marketing agency based in, I would say based in Leeds, but we're actually, with the pandemic, we're based all over the all over Yorkshire now, um, with actually one of our colleagues up in Darlington, so we're actually covering the North East as well, if you start to think about that. Um, we do uh, website build and design, SEO, social media and paid stuff. Um, we also do a bit of YouTube, uh, but we are not experts in YouTube, um, but Greg is. Um, so unsurprisingly, as you would have guessed, this recording will be edited when we finished and post on YouTube. So if, you, if you're not watching this live, if you're not one of the people in the room, you'll be able to watch it again. So I'm just going to hand over to Greg now. Greg, do you want to tell us a little bit about you? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I just say start by saying hi, everyone. Good to be here. Thanks for the invite, Richard. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep it really short and sweet, actually, so we can get into the actual value of stuff. So my name is Greg. I've been on YouTube for about five years now. And recently I've given myself the label YouTube revenue specialist slash YouTube business specialist. So uh, my sort of passion and what I'm working to do is help YouTubers become entrepreneurs because I just see so many YouTubers not taking full advantage of the opportunities they have in front of them and the attention that they have amassed on the platform. So I try and bring in what I've learned from formal education and from my business projects uh, outside of my channel, um, that expertise onto the platform and help YouTubers level up there. There we go. Yeah, yeah thanks. Okay. So um, I think most people are aware of YouTube. Anyone, anyone not been on YouTube at all? There can't be anyone who's not been on YouTube for something, even if it's to like find it out to change a plug or something like that, which is what well, I use it for quite a lot because I'm rubbish at things like that. <laughs> um, so YouTube is the, is the world's second biggest search engine, unsurprisingly, because it's owned by Google. Um, so clearly Google favours it and it's the go-to place um, for, for all kinds of information and um, entertainment. My kids watch endless videos of um, other children playing video games, which I, I've never really understood, but they spend hours doing it. Um, and then, yeah, then there's, there's, a, there's a whole, a whole world out there. There's a niche for everything. Even I do know a guy who runs a, a runs a really boring channel where he basically ticks, ticks his camera and he'll record like the Thames for four hours <laughs> and then post it. And, and apparently he does in terms of viewers and, and, and everything, he does quite well. I don't really get the point of that, but, um, YouTube is definitely a really, really useful channel. If you're not using, utilizing YouTube. It's something that you should definitely be considering and looking at how you can build it into your overall marketing plan. Um, obviously, Greg's a YouTube specialist. From our point of view, um, we'll, we use video and YouTube as part of that whole plan. And a lot of the times we actually use YouTube in, slight, in a slightly different way, I guess. We like being found on YouTube because that's useful, but we also use it as almost like a placeholder for videos as well. Because once you've got a video, hosting it on your own website it can be really tricky because you need kind of the server set up and everything to display it properly. Whereas if your YouTube video is actually hosted on YouTube, you can just embed them in your website and they'll play as they are right in the site wonderfully um, without you having to worry about clever hosting or bandwidths or any of those things. So we tend to use it a little bit more, a, bit, a little bit more like that. Um, but what I'd like to talk about today and obviously with Greg's assistance is to talk about a, a more um, using YouTube as a strategy. So for that, I'm going to hand over to Greg. And Greg, if you can give us your thoughts on using YouTube as a strategy for your marketing. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm going to make an assumption here, Richard, that your audience are entrepreneurs, business owners, and have an interest in using YouTube to, to win more business and, and grow more revenue. Is that the consensus? Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> yeah cool yeah um yeah okay we're getting a thumbs up so yeah youtube's a, a fantastic platform and and i personally just i still think it's one of the most underutilized platforms by entrepreneurs um i think maybe 
there's a stigma that ROI on YouTube is a, is a bit more deferred, like takes longer to start seeing the ROI on YouTube compared to other social platforms. So I can kind of see why it's still um, the, the lesser used platform from the other ones. But YouTube is amazing for business. Um, I actually made a few bullet points before this uh, to, to run through. Like, uh, yeah, in terms of business in particular, like first and foremost, global reach. If you've got a business that lends itself to global customers, you've got a potential global audience that you can tap into on YouTube. Um, and I think it's one of the easiest platforms to grow a global reach for businesses. So that's a great starting point. Um, it's also free. So you can build a very large following on YouTube for free. Um, in terms of other social media platforms, Instagram, I think a lot of the platforms are leaning more into a pay to play pricing structure like if you really want to get any exposure on instagram these days you're going to really be paying to promote promote your posts to get ads youtube you can still grow tens if not hundreds of thousands of followers on there for free um you can build targeted followers and audiences on youtube very easily by sticking to a niche and, and building a following within the target target audience it lends itself to automation too so you like i've done this myself and i see tons of other entrepreneurial youtubers building automated sales funnels uh, where YouTube is the traffic um, source bringing customers into that funnel. So hugely lends itself to automation. Evergreen, it's evergreen. You can make videos today that will be seen in two, three, four years that are feeding customers into your sales funnel uh, that far down the line. And finally, uh, one of the best things in business is it allows us to build a deeper connection with our audience. Yeah, you know, there's that saying people do business with people, not not companies. And YouTube is a great place for business owners or employees of a company to put their personality and themselves into their content and put a face to behind a product. Um so yeah, you know, I'm obviously a huge fanboy of of YouTube. I'm a I'm a bit biased here, but I just do think it's got a huge a uh, huge potential for for businesses and it's still underutilized at this point. Cool. Okay. So, um in terms of in terms of people who who maybe aren't heavy users of YouTube, who are maybe just maybe just maybe they're just users and they're not used to putting up actual content. Um what would you say would be so if some let's say that one of one of our people on today would like to start a YouTube channel kind of today from ground from from nothing what are the kind of basic steps what what would be the process you would talk that you you think that they would take greg sure yeah um so i mean there's obviously there's technical stuff which i can get to if, if people ask me sort of specific questions later on down the line but in terms of just sort of theory and and that sort of approach i'd say the most important thing really and this is kind of what i teach my students is to really nail down your branding, so sort of the, the, the strategy you're going to come into YouTube with. So when I say branding, I mean, I don't just mean like the logo you're going to be using and the colors you're going to be using in your videos and stuff. I mean, what are people going to be coming to your channel for? What is the value you're going to be providing your viewers? I see a lot of people come to YouTube that haven't thought about that and they end up with just a really unthought through like very content strategy where they're trying to make videos on this that and everything and there's just no consistency there and that means that they don't end up building a targeted audience and they don't have the leverage later on down the line to make sales so i would say it's really important for people coming to the platform at the start to think what am i what's my topic going to be what's my niche going to be that i'm going to sit within what's the value people are going to be getting from me uh, and to just really nail down that that sort of branding when they come onto the platform Okay. And I guess one of the, one of the, there's a couple of big worries that a lot of people have about producing YouTube videos or any, or any type of video. I guess the first one is um, equipment because people have that thing of, like, it's, it's a, I'm making a video. So I need a lot of people have large camera in their mind or, or, or whatever. So I guess there's, a, there's an equipment thing and, and, and with that comes almost like a quality issue as well. Um, and then there's then there's suddenly changing the the, the business or you, or yourself from being whatever you normally do into almost like a, a almost like a TV production 
if you know what I mean. So you're kind of, you're filming it. You need to check, make sure the sound's okay, the lighting's okay. Um, write a script, um, create graphics, edit it. Sure. So kind of, it, let's say, let's again, going back to that thing of somebody starting today, how would you guide somebody like that? Sure, yeah. And that's um, that's a big sticking point for a lot of people. Uh, the reality is, you don't really need to worry about quality at the start. Like YouTube is kind of ingrained into the essence of YouTube. Like, ex like people expect, they don't have as high expectations of quality as they do with television or like promotional sales videos. YouTubers started, you know, 10, 15 years ago, it was mainly people sat in their bedroom talking into a webcam on their laptop. And that's where, <laughs> that's what we're doing now. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, and that's where the first generation of YouTube celebrities like came from was that sort of like format of video. So it's always kind of been like built into YouTube, this, this lower expectation of quality, like you can get away on, on YouTube with, with literally just using your your phone and speaking into your phone. Like, I think a lot of entrepreneurs and new YouTubers overthink it when they come to the platform and they think I need to hire, I need to buy a studio and, and get really expensive equipment and hire a content team and, you know, and directors and all this stuff. And you really don't like people connect with and resonate with realness and authenticity. It, it's meshed into the identity of YouTube. So yeah, I, at the start, I would just say, seriously, don't, over, don't overthink it. What's really important is that you're providing value to your viewers. Mm -hmm. The message is there, the value's there. They'll forgive uh, the fact that you're filming on an iPhone 10, yeah, and that you don't have a, <laughs> a lapel mic attached to you. It's all good. And um, so I'd say, yeah, now the fundamentals at the start, now connect with an audience, providing value, and then upgrade the other stuff, you know, as and when at a later stage when, you, when you're growing. Okay. I mean, yeah. kind of give people an example. Mo the majority of our videos that are on the Mark Not Swiss youtube channel which I, I hope you'll go and visit um our, our, our zoom calls so that's exactly what this is we're recording this now it's a zoom call this will record i've got a i've got a fairly decent webcam it's not like that laptop webcam i've got a fairly decent webcam and i've got a microphone and hopefully i'm i'm coming across clearly um but but this is this is the, this is essentially the kit we're recording this this will give me a little file i'll um edit this and add add some kind of starting graphics and some ending graphics and then i'll upload it to the youtube to our youtube channel it's pretty much as simple as that so you can start making con uh, content without having to do too much so for a, for a business point of view from our point of view this is why we this is why we started doing this because we could easily create content for our youtube channel and then conversely for our social channels and for our for our website as well really simply so that, that's kind of effectively any, as, as every as all of you are on this YouTube or on this Zoom call, you've all got the kit to make a similar video to to the one you're participating in at the moment. Mm, for sure, I mean one of the biggest creators on the platform right now is a guy called Mr Beast. He's got like 20 million or something crazy subscribers, but he always says you know he got his first 100,000 subscribers just from talking into an iPhone 5. Like that's all, that was all the gear he had. Um, and I know channels that have millions of subscribers that are still shooting with mobile phones. So seriously, yeah, don't overthink the, uh, the production value. Um, it's all about just coming in with value, connecting with an audience. And once you've sort of developed that skill, you can worry about the production quality at a later date. Okay. And, and do you have any, any tips on, I think another, another sticking point is to get people to appear on camera. I know we've got a couple of people on here for technical reasons or for whatever, modesty reasons, who don't want to appear on the camera, and that's fine, that's not a problem. But getting, so if you've got if you've got staff and you want to get them on, on, on camera, or, or even yourself, I think that can be a, that can be a sticking point, because even when I take photographs of clients or, or, or staff members, or whatever, they're like, oh, I hate being on camera, or they want to see the photographs and they want to edit it or whatever. Well, YouTube's a lot more unforgiving because I can't really, I can only edit it so much. You are kind of look and sound how you look and sound and there's only so much that can be done. So is there any tips on kind of people being good on camera? I know that's a tricky thing because we're not all actors. Yeah, yeah, that's a tricky one. I mean, 
video like that that's youtube through and through like you can't you can't ignore that so if you want to be on youtube you have to be in front of the camera like if if that's a hurdle you can't get past youtube's probably not going to be the platform for you <laughs> <laughs> like that's just the way it is um yeah i mean everyone sucks at the start i sucked at this if i go back and watch my first videos i was like a robot i just i didn't move and it was word 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 you know i was clearly just overthinking everything all i can say is it gets easier over time practice makes perfect um but yeah i mean it, i i do sometimes wonder if people people say to me like yeah, i want to be on youtube but i don't want to be on camera it's like what well, what do you expect you know <laughs> it's, it's a prerequisite <laughs> to being on youtube you can't get past that yeah um but yeah, just ask yourself, I guess, if, if it, if it, because people have different skill sets and different talents and qualities, you know, uh, whereas some people might be great writers and blogging works really well for them. Other people might love being on camera and, and having their face shown to the world and, and YouTube's the direction I'd send them. And uh, other people might like to spend ages pre like planning a photo and taking a photo and being on Instagram. I think you have to kind of just decide where your passions and your talents and your interests lie and, and, uh, fall into, uh, go in the, in the direction that that question leads you. But if YouTube is the direction you decide to take, and I kind of hope it is, cause I know that there's so much opportunity on YouTube. Yeah. Just don't put too much pressure on yourself. You're not going to be amazing at the start and practice is perfect. You'll, you'll get better over time. Cool. Okay. So I guess, I guess one of the things that, that really you, you so you've, you've gone through all this effort you've, you've created your film you've edited it you it's it's done as, as well as you can as you can do it, and you're really proud of that how do we get viewers because that's one of the things you see so many people who've created um who've created youtube videos spent a lot of time a lot of effort a lot of budget the the if it's a business the MD signed it off and they've, they've done everything's as perfect as it can be and then it just sits there on its own on youtube with no viewers no interaction and it looks nice but nobody sure. it's like it's like one of those it's like a, a tree cut down in the woods if it doesn't if nobody hears it does it exist um <laughs> so so I, I guess that that's the that's the next part is you've got a lovely video how do you get viewers what what are the what 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 yeah what's the process what once yeah. you, you've got, you've got you your video attraction yeah, your initial traction. How do you get people to watch it? Sure. So the strategy I always recommend people who are brand new to YouTube to take is <clears throat> to pursue a search engine uh, focused strategy. So uh, I don't know if people are aware of this statistic, but YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world, second to Google. Uh, but Google also puts YouTube videos in Google search results. So you could really say YouTube shows up on both of the biggest platforms, but yeah, so I would always recommend new, new people that don't have any pre existing audience to try and make videos that are going to appear in search results. So think, what are my target viewers searching for? What are they looking for when they come to the platform and make videos, um, that are going to come up in those results because yeah, when you've got, when you've got no initial audience that's kind of really the only way to build traction and there's there's tips later on down the line when you have built up those initial subscribers from following a search strategy to then harness other traffic sources on the platform but at the start for sure search would be the way i'd go okay and so so where would you where do you begin that search do you begin that on google do you begin that on youtube itself what would be the what would be the process yeah so i'd say if you're on YouTube, you want to have videos on YouTube. So start on YouTube and do your research on YouTube. Um, and this is why it goes back to what I said about branding and having a clear idea about like the target viewer you're trying to appeal to the niche that you're sticking within, because when you have those answers, those questions answered, you're then going to be able to put yourselves into your target viewer's shoes and think what are the typical things that these people are going to be looking for. So it all just come down to understanding why you're on the platform uh, and who you're trying to attract. And there's things you can do like, um, so I'm working with a, um, he's a coach, he's a consultant for coaches. So he's like a, a coach's consultant, but <laughs> <laughs> he helps coaches, um, price their products higher. So, you know, one of the most obvious search terms that his target customer might be coming to YouTube for is how to charge more for your services. 
So um, that was like the first video that we built for him, uh, for him to put into the world. And what you can do is when you go to YouTube and you start typing out something that you think your target viewer might be looking for, it does this thing where it kind of predicts, it predicts the sentence you're about to type. It's a thing called Google Autocomplete, YouTube Autocomplete. So when you're doing that on YouTube, it will show you, like, if you start typing how to price, it will show you the rest of the sentence and like common searches that people are already looking for based around what you, what you, what you're starting to type. So, um, it's quite hard to explain this without showing it, but you play around with the YouTube search bar and see what it kind of automatically like puts in front of you and, and suggests as what people are already looking for and just start making videos around those like all pre-existing queries that people are looking for in your niche and you'll, and you'll definitely get attention if you start doing that from the start cool okay so the, the process sounds very similar to um to, to kind of standard to what i would call i guess standard seo um so that that's that's a similar way to how we um how we approach that from from a website point of view so if we're trying to rank a page for, for, for a term, we'll go and we'll do the keyword research and find out what the volume is, look for the terms that are coming up. Um, but the interesting thing from a, from a standard web page point of view is that Google will look for the copy and the content that's in there. So it'll look for the, for the headline and the subheads and all the content and the copy and the, the, the links in and links out and um, images that you can use that you can tag up, et cetera, et cetera. But from a YouTube point of view, how on earth does that work? Because mm. there's, there's, yeah, because all the content is is sat in the video. Sure. And I'm sure, obviously, you can give it a title, so you give it a relevant title. But then you see, so I see so many videos that've got a, got an awful title and a video, and they've got no description around it. They don't seem to have anything else around it. They just kind of go, well, it's video, and and that and that's and that and that's it. So. So how do you get the YouTube algorithm? Because it, it, because it's it's belong it's owned by Google, I guess. It's it the search function works in a similar kind of way to standard Google. Mm -hmm. So what do you do to the to the YouTube video to to, to help it be found? Yeah. Um, so you're right. You've you've identified uh, some text that we can put into a video. We've got the title. We've also got a description box that you can fill in when you're uploading your video onto YouTube. And there's also tags that you can add to a video when you're uploading your video too. So these are like three written methods that you can use to kind of improve your searchability when you're doing a video. But I mean, YouTube is super sophisticated. So it, you know, it, it goes way further than just interpreting what you've written. So to start off with, YouTube's got voice to text technology built into it. So the things that we're saying in our videos, YouTube understands that and it's able to okay. paint, like to build an understanding of what's actually happening in your video, understanding what the video is about and therefore kind of decide, understanding who are the right people to put this video in front of. So it doesn't just come down to what you write on YouTube. It used to be back in the day and people used to be able to find hacks and find little like ways of cheating the system. But YouTube's got a lot more sophisticated than that now, and it, it's using stuff that's actually happening in the video to decide um, where, to, like, where to put that video on the site too. I think we got a question from Nadia. Yeah, sure. Go, yeah, go, on, go ahead, Nadia. Is it okay to interrupt for a question? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. I was, was going to ask something about that. Do keywords, if you use, um, so like the voice to text? Uh, oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> the voice to text. Um, which generates the subtitles, do the keywords which appear in your subtitles directly contribute to SEO? 100%, yeah. So, oh, uh, okay. so you really need to construct your script with that in mind then? Yeah, sure. The same way if you were writing a blog post and you had the title as containing the keywords you wanted, you'd also put the keywords throughout the post, the article. It's the same with YouTube. You, you, you know, you're know, going to have your keywords in the video title, but you're going to make sure you're saying your direct keywords and then also keywords loosely associated with um, what you're trying to target to. Yeah, it all it all gets taken into account. Cool, thanks. And I, I've not got proof for this, but I'm a believer that kind of YouTube kind of front loads its um, understanding of your video. So if you were to say, what I mean by that is if you were to say your keywords earlier in the video rather than later, I think that's going to give you more strength, you know, to come up in search results there too. 
Okay. So, so are we? Are you suggesting that the description that you can put that you can put below isn't necessarily required? Yeah. I mean, I, I well, I would also I would always say use every tool you have at your disposal. So do it. YouTube's pretty much come out and said they don't really use tags at all anymore. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, because it's got so good at kind of understanding what is happening in your video, like tags. Uh, they, they've said that they're redundant. I mean, I still use them because they're there and it's something I can type in. And it might be uh, useless me using them, but I'd still use them. But uh, yeah, YouTube just it heavily uses like what it learns from what's happening in your video to decide where to put like okay. you know, who to put your video in front of and title is the next most important thing after the title so after what is happening in your video and your title description and tags kind of really get pushed down in, in the level of importance of, of how youtube makes its decisions right. well okay yeah i think that surprises a lot of people to hear. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I i i mean I, I know they've got ai technology to kind of listen listen in and, and extract words but i didn't realize that they were doing it and it, with that kind of strength i'll be honest yeah no uh it, it's it's kind of mind-blowing when you start to peel back the the surface of, of the machine like um it goes it, it, even one step further than that like they have image recognition technology built into the platform where they can actually see what's happening frame by frame in the video and kind of make an interpretation of, of like what's happening so they can understand if a video is of a football game or if a video is of a dance performance like it's, right, well. it's kind of crazy how good they've got a kind of understanding video and uh deciding who to put videos in front of yeah cool rashpo you you have a question yeah so just going on the back of uh what you're saying about getting visibility on search if you've produced a, a, a number of videos and you're not getting as much traction as you would like on youtube would you say go back to the search engine find out what people are searching for and maybe even rename your videos of, of your titles in, in YouTube. Sure. I'm, that's, how can I, I'm trying to think how to tackle this. Um, Good question. Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, it's, it's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt you. Like if you think I've made a video in the past, but the title and the description I use really didn't um, clearly like describe or or, or like um, it didn't put me in front of my target viewers as well as it could have. You know, I'm going to go back and make it more search friendly. Do that, but in contradiction to what I'm saying there, you also want to make sure that what you're stating in your title matches up to what's actually happening in the video. Of course, of course. Yeah. Because if there's that mismatch and, and people click on a video expecting one thing and then they quickly realize that that's not what's happening in the video and they click off, that's going to damage, damage. Yeah, the, 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 um, the ranking or like the quality that YouTube associates with your video and it's going to push down exposure in long term. Uh, absolutely. No, I get it. The, the first thing is to get the click. And once you get the click and people are watching, you want retention. So sure. if it's clickbaity or it's the wrong kind of title, obviously, and you're not serving that in the video content, then you're going to lose your audience. But I'm just thinking if, if you're new, you've put a load of content out. And obviously the first, I don't know, um, people like Ali Abdal say, you know, 70, 80 videos. I'd love to hear what your opinion is. You know, is it the first 70, 80 videos? You've got to just do the grind, get the, allow YouTube's algorithms to even realize you, you're on YouTube and then you start to get traction and, and or, or would you, you know, what's your thoughts there, even the first, I don't know, 100? Yeah, I think when Ali says that, and it's funny that you mentioned Ali because he was an example I was thinking of mentioning later on. He's a, he's a great creator. I think when he says that, he's kind of um, describing more like the the learning curve that it takes creators to get good at becoming video creators. So that kind of number he puts there is kind of like an abstract number of like, that's going to take you to get to the quality of creator to real, really see like huge results. So, so there's that. I mean, if you come out the gate and you're making amazing videos from day one, YouTube's going to know that. And it's going to, you know, I've seen people grow to a million subscribers in their first 10 trial videos because they just know what they're doing. They, they, they're right place, right time, perfect market fit and it explodes. But, um, it's the same with everything. Practice makes perfect. And yeah, I think Ali referring to there is 
that's the time it's going to take you to understand how to make good videos, what it takes to make a good video, how to get better in front of camera, how to understand how YouTube works and how sort of like what gets people's attention and what doesn't. Um, that's kind of like the, the training ground of, of videos that um, is kind of commonly thrown out there for sure. Yeah, because I've, I've, I've heard people talk, I've, one guy I knew, I knew, it's quite a few years ago now, so maybe things have changed, but he did say that you needed like 10,000 hours worth of video on your YouTube channel, not on an individual video, but to kind of get the volume up because that would help you be seen more. And that was a few years ago. So yeah. potentially it's all changed. Um, um, I'd say he probably doesn't know what he's talking about by the time. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah, no, you can have, you can put one video on YouTube and it can go viral and get 5 million views. You know, right, it, okay. there's, there's no hard and fast figure. Um, if, if you're not in that 0.1% and you're where the rest of us, where like you're probably going to have to build up a body of work to have like a back catalogue where if people yeah. find you, they can watch that video, then go watch all the other ones. Yeah, like quantity is beneficial, but there isn't a magic number where YouTube waits for you to hit before it decides to make your channel go viral and push you out. To right, okay, yeah. okay. Because I think, again, going back to the SEO analogy, when you when you build a website, you build it on a niche. So ours is about marketing, obviously. And then we we add extra marketing content on that about our services and blogs, et cetera, et cetera. So we build it up into, the way I describe it to SEO clients is um, like a, a business card or, or a leaflet. Google doesn't care about that. It's like, there's no information on it. What Google wants is a is a book with with index and like chapters in it effectively um so you need to, to rank a website it needs a fair bit of content so to 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 get your channel ranking and we're not just talking about videos now that kind of your whole kind of body of work do you need do you think you need a body of work that's 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 built around that niche so you are building that well a chat you're building a channel aren't you that's mm. about cooking or youtube or marketing or cups or whatever it is you, you, do you think that that's the kind of process where you need to be you need to almost have that that channel me mentality in mind um I, I think yeah because a lot of people have a background and history with blogging and, and and ranking on seo there it's easy to get sort of fixated and caught up on the technical part of youtube because that kind of mindset does work i guess when you're blogging or all that really matters on YouTube is that you're putting out good videos, like good quality videos mm. that people want to watch. Um, and that really ties into what I said at, at the start of like providing value in your video. That value could be in the form of edu education information that someone's come to YouTube to, to, to learn, or it could be in the form of entertainment and, and virality. But YouTube just looks out to, to make, to, YouTube is just looking to see if you're putting videos out there that people want to watch and people are enjoying. And if you, if you can nail that, like if you can learn that skill, it doesn't matter if you have one video up or 10 or a thousand, like okay. you, you've got opportunity there to blow up and get tons of views. Um, now, if we go to sort of biz sales and marketing theory and business fundamentals, like obviously having like quantity and having as many touch points on the site to get as many opportunities to get people into your funnel is beneficial. But if we're looking, if we're purely just talking about growing, getting subscribers and getting a following, uh, it's all comes down to just making good quality videos that people watch. Um, yeah, there's, there's no magic number that you need to be hitting there. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's, I think that's good. I think that's uh, an asset to YouTube, you know, like it just understands if, if you're putting good videos out there and it rewards you for it, um, you can't really trick it with putting with quantity or any other hacks, it's all yeah. comes down to whether you're making good good content at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I, I think I think it, 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 it's obviously developed in the same way as, as the Google search engine has, has developed because obviously years ago when I first started on Google search engine, you could put, you could kind of hide keywords at the bottom of websites and colour them white on a white background and get away sure. with it. Um, <laughs> and it was it was just really wild west and any old thing could get ranking. But now obviously Google is far cleverer and using AI, YouTube is obviously... A, a similar kind of thing and i guess I, I guess potentially one of the changes with with youtube is because youtube is now competing with instagram and tiktok and snapchat and everywhere else that's got a video option um they kind of have to having to play that game and i guess that's probably why the introduction of youtube shorts comes in because that's trying to play against well you um in um instagram reels and um tiktok um and 
one of the things on TikTok is that you can become viral on TikTok with one video because it's sure. that, that's how that one works. So I guess YouTube are trying to, well, I've got to compete with that kind of hungry video on market. And I suppose that's why, that's where that comes from. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, YouTube's number one priority is keeping its viewers on its website as long as possible. Because the longer someone is on their website watching videos, the more ads they can put in front of that person. Mm -hmm. So what that means for us on the other side of it, when we're creating content is, if I make the best possible videos possible that keep people watching for as long as possible and make them want to watch more of my videos after they found me, YouTube's going to reward me for that. YouTube's going to put me in front of more people. It's going to blow me up and get me more subscribers. And yeah, uh, the fundamental that I always try and remind people is it all just comes down to value. If you're making videos that provide the value to the viewer that they want, you're going to get them watching for longer. You're going to get all the other things and YouTube's going to reward you for it. Um, okay. So yeah, but, yeah. there's no magic hack or like in the Wild West, the SEO days back in the day. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Google's too clever for that. <laughs> I, 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 and I guess and that, that ties back to, again, to a, it's a, it, again, there's lots of analogies with SEO. So there's that kind of short versus long thing. And, and so is, is it beneficial to do a longer video or is it beneficial to do short videos? Or actually, I think I'm going to preempt you. I think I'm going to preempt your answer. I think, it, is it is it that the video has to be as long or as short as it needs to be as long as it's adding value? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make a note to answer that. And I, I think you're kind of already uh, onto what I'm going to say. But I did see that Nadia put her hand up a second ago. I don't want to brush Sorry, Nadia. Yeah. I, I didn't spot you there, Nadia. Go it's ahead. okay. It's okay. I'm still yet to work out how to raise your hand on Zoom. Okay, um. no worries. <laughs> Real hands are fine too. That's all right. Big old hands. Um, talking about like hiding text in white and things like that, which used to be all right, Don't and now you get punished yeah. to death for it yeah. and tortured. What does YouTube punish us for? What doesn't it like, and what should we avoid mm. doing? What? Well, um, we have things that we can. There's things that we can do in. Uh, our videos that advertisers don't like you know like i said youtube's number one priority is making money from advertising revenue so if we're doing things in our video like saying hateful things against people or, or swearing or showing sexual content things that are going to upset advertisers that's a no-no and youtube will limit your uh, exposure on the platform back to what um uh, i was saying with rush rush pile um if there's a mismatch between what people expect when they click your video to what they actually get when they start watching a video, uh, YouTube hates that because that, you know, they open your video, get immediately disappointed and the, the viewer leaves your video, that's low watch time and that's not what YouTube wants at the end of the day. So um, sort of false promises or, or, or deceiving view, uh, viewers kind of in the same way that like all of this keyword stuffing was happening back in the day with blog posts, uh, YouTube hates that too, yeah. Those are kind of the two big things that, that, that stand out to me. Um, so if you just behave with some integrity, really, then you're not going to get you're not going to get slapped down for anything by the algorithm. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Clean, co clean content that um, prioritizes the viewing experience uh, and, and like you know, doesn't trick the viewer and you want to win it. Six of those fundamentals. I guess, I guess the, the, the other side to that question for, um, is what are the things that YouTube kind of rewards? What, what, what's what are the other other almost like um, little sanity things that you can sanitary things that you can kind of do and go right? I've I've done that. I've done that. I've done that, and I've kind of matched matched their expectation. Yeah, sure. Um, so the flip side of, of uh, the opposite of what I was just saying, an alignment with what p people expect from the title and the image. Like, do you, know, do you know what a thumbnail is? If I say thumbnail, do people know that? Yeah. So what? the viewer sees in your thumbnail and title, and then when they click and will start watching a video, if what's been promised at that first stage is what is happening in the video, YouTube loves that. So, you know, we've already kind of covered that. They love long watch time. Um, well, it's probably better for me to say long session time. There's a difference between watch time and session time. So watch time could be interpreted to be how long a viewer watches one single video, like how much of that video they watch. Session time is how long they spend on your content. So it could be watching three, four, five of your videos. 
and with a high session time, so if someone finds my channel, watches one video, thinks, oh, that was a great video, like Greg's the creator for me, I'm going to watch more of his stuff, watch the second video, watch the third, watch the fourth. YouTube's got four or five opportunities to put ads in front of that viewer. So YouTube knows that my channel is a good place for like capturing viewers and keeping them on the site um, and, and, and giving opportunities to show ads. So long session times um, is, is another thing YouTube loves. And um, okay, yeah, and, and just going back to the, the thumbnail, like I said it before as well, and you probably know this if you know um, about blogging, there's a metric called click-through rate. So uh, yeah, how many percentage of people see your thumbnail to then click it. The higher the click-through rate, YouTube loves that too. So um, that's where we kind of all have to kind of learn to become semi-graphic designers uh, if we're looking to use YouTube because it really does matter the the images we use there. But those are the three the three fundamentals: session time, click-through rate, and um, delivering what's promised at, at the first stage of the interaction with the viewers. Excellent. Okay, so um, we're coming to it's what. 10, 10 to 1 now so i guess we'll we'll um we'll we can move on so has anybody got any questions for either myself or for greg more likely for greg to be honest he's a youtube expert <laughs> anyone got any questions rash hey cool um greg i i've got a question but it, it might not be for this session now because it's a bit bit more in depth i'll give you a quick overview of it and then tell me if it's uh, right to answer now or, or later okay i've got a, I've got a client um, he's got a quite a healthy youtube channel um with with regards to subscribers approximately 80 odd thousand subscribers um however the views per videos are literally in the 50s or hundreds mm -hmm. he's not getting the views that he, you know so substantial views he's got the subscribers over time he's been running this channel for a long time is in is in an education space uh like he, he tutors maths for gcse level so it's a very specific niche and that's how he's built his subscribers but <coughs> He's looking for some, I suppose, tactics or strategies to understand. He's got such a big subscriber base. He's got good content, but he's just not getting the views because all the other revenue opportunities beyond monetization, you know, sponsorships and, and, and the rest they're of attached it. attached to views. They're all attached to views. And on, on such small views, he just can't get any traction. Sure. I, I mean, I could answer that. Do you want me to answer that, Richard? Is that on topic? Or? Yeah, feel, yeah, feel free. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. So I, it sounds like he's actually uh, having a problem similar to me. So you know, I've got 80, <coughs> 86,000 subscribers now. So around the same size as, as your creator. Uh, well, I'm getting like high hundreds, low thousands every time I do a video these days. Um, you know, when you, and when you do the percentages there to views to subscribers, it's, it's not ideal. So the problem, uh, the, the reason I've got into this problem is due to lack of consistency in the past. And that goes back to what I said at the start of this talk is when you come to YouTube, you need to have a clear idea of what niche you're going to be basing yourself in and sort of what value you're going to be providing in every video that you do and just stick into that consistency across um, your journey. And I, it I didn't do that because I didn't have me telling me what to do back then. So and I think I've gravitated and pivoted across so many different niches during my time on YouTube that I now have an audience that might have subscribed to me three years ago when I made a few videos about cryptocurrency, but have no interest in my videos on YouTube revenue and, and entrepreneurship these days. So there's a complete disconnect with my existing audience and, and the content I'm doing now. So I'm not sure if your creator has, has ever changed and pivoted in the past, but that might be something that's working against him. Um, yeah. They've always been in maths. In that they've always been in maths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's potentially then if, if there's not been a consistency issue, it sounds like there's like a viewer retention thing there, like people finding him, subscribing and then dropping off. Probably needs to get better at making videos <laughs> and just like keep holding viewer interest, delivering what viewers want to see and, and, and making entertaining content. Um, but there's a few like top of funnel things you can do. So first off, like try and develop the skill of getting his viewers to watch one video and then sending them to another of his videos to keep mm -hmm. people on his channel and watching his ecosystem videos. I think, um, I think you said he, um, sorry, yeah, I'm getting the yeah, general. Yeah. Um, that's something I really prioritize now is when it gets to the end, I'm saying, oh, and if you want more on this or something that else is, is related, here's another video I've done, click here to watch that. And that brings the session time up. It starts giving us positive indicators on from YouTube. Um, that's one thing. <laughs> 
I'd say like, and this is something I've been doing recently and it's really helped me um, start to see a, a, an uptake in my channel. Get back to basics and prioritize understanding his viewers better. Um, I've really been uh, like doing a lot of market research recently uh, of my audience, putting out like mm -hmm. surveys. I've been uh, inviting them onto one-to-one -one calls and really seeing like why they subscribe yeah. to me, what they want to learn from me uh, and what they would love to see in the future. Uh, and that's going to help me kind of align my content strategy with what actually people want to see. So understanding your audience never hurts either. Yeah, that's helpful. That's a good shout. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Nadia, did you have your hand up? Cute. <laughs> again, again. Um, <laughs> I love it. Keep it coming. We, so we, YouTube isn't, isn't a big channel for us. We tend to use um, Facebook far more. So obviously we embed videos in Facebook um, on, on natively. Um, how, if we don't use ads in YouTube, how do we increase our exposure? Because we're, we're doing some really, we've got some really high quality content, but we've got a really low following. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it, to keep it simple, it comes down to putting out videos that people want to watch and that they're going to want to come back to see more of at the end of the day. Um, I see a lot of businesses making the mistake of just kind of really putting like promotional content on YouTube uh, and just hoping that's going to get them attention but it's like who comes to youtube to see <coughs> a promotion or an ad you know that's not what people come to visit the site for so it's really putting the viewer first and, mm. and, and really understanding like why they're on the site what they're going to want to uh, get from being on youtube and 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 putting videos out that, that hit those metrics um mm -hmm. to keep it top level that's that's like a a top level answer is there any specific challenges you're having around that like uh, um, do you want to provide some context of what you do yeah so we've, we've we've got a recycling a plastics recycling company we make furniture raised beds bits and bats like that cool um we use youtube or we use video content to supplement um our products so we do like um assembly videos we do case studies on um customers um, community projects that we've been involved in, stuff like that. So in terms of it being stuff that people want to see, we think it is. And when we plug it via newsletters and things like that, we get a lot of clicks. But I don't necessarily think we get a lot of subscribers. And, sure. and our customers aren't, it's not... We don't really have the vibe of like subscribe, hit the bell. <laughs> you know, that's not that's not our personality. Sure. Um, well, I mean, you don't have to have that. Like, if if you only need that personality if that's what your target viewer is going to respond to. So if you're if you're making videos for teenagers and children, then that works. But if you're going for a more older or sophisticated audience, then you don't need to be doing that stuff. Um, and that sounds really interesting. So recycling plastics to to make other things. Is that right? So yeah, I'm getting ideas already. Like, you know, you've got, you can be attracting viewers there that are uh, sustainability and environmentally conscious, you know, and then providing that like um, feel good factor and that like, and tapping into that interest there. You can, there's kind of the informative educational aspect there, like actually how you're doing that process of, of recycling the plastics and making the new furniture. So I'd really focus on like those two value propositions of like, education of how you how you do these things like looking behind the scenes and kind of seeing the production line or seeing what happens behind already the done it we've already um, done it <laughs> <laughs> and also like applying like a message around it of why this is good for the for planet but i mean I, i'm making assumption i've never seen your content if you're talking like tr uh, we have high this? quality content. We have an in-house videographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have really high quality are you, content. Are you, don't we? are you talking about yourselves a lot and about the company a lot, or is it all about like here's something cool that we're doing this weekend? Do you know what I mean? Because if you're being too pushy and too promotional, like no, not at all. Um, on, honestly speaking, every if we do content like this, it's always about our customer first, okay. and our product is kind of slotted in at the end. So sure. it, we'll concentrate on a community garden and we'll do a whole load of stuff on the community garden. And then it'll be like, oh, we gave them a few raised beds. I, I wonder, I wonder, Nadia, whether it is that kind of um, that search, that SEO 
thought and got maybe going back to your titles as Rashpal talked I, about. I wonder whether you're right about maybe that. Going, rather than going um, gardening Blackburn or whatever it might have been. Yeah. And maybe giving it a better description. Yeah. In the title. Yeah. Drop me a, yeah. I think we I think we might need to focus on that. Yeah, yeah. Because I think the content's good. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we're it's not, hard we're to not say rich. without seeing your channel. So uh, drop me an email, Greg at we'll gregpriest.com with your channel link, and I'll I'll get you back. Greg at Greg at gregpriest.com. Okay, thank you. I, uh, I could, I, guys, I'll, I'll I'll put you in touch. That's fine. I've got I know, I know Nadia. She's the next client, so I can I'll, I'll connect you. That's not a problem. Yeah, and and I'll just see. I'll have a quick look and initial like really glaring obvious things that stand out to me. I'll, I'll send you some. Thank you. I appreciate it. Go, Rashpal. Um, hi, um, this is for Greg. Greg, um, you know, in three minutes we're, we're going to end this and, and I'm just thinking about more value from yourself. Do you offer production services or are you just teaching YouTube? Um, you know, where, where do you position yourself and how do we keep in touch with you? I'm already subscribed to your channel and I've digested a lot of content, but I'm just thinking what, what else do you, how else do you support creators like us in, sure. in the, rest of the community? Uh, I'm, I'm a consultant, so it's oh. uh, it's it's kind of done with you or you know that sort of approach. So I don't do any kind of production in-house content creation stuff here. But if you ever need help with guidance and assistance, then uh, yeah, I'm available for consulting. Okay, and just out of curiosity, where, where are you based? I'm in Leeds. Are you you Richard. are in Leeds. Okay, yeah. right, awesome. Are you in Leeds as well? Are you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Cool. Um, we can meet yeah. for a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Drop me an email, yeah, if you want to get in touch, and uh, we can talk shop. Cool. So is it, does, anybody, does anybody else, Bruce or Stephen or Courtney, anybody else have any questions? Well, some there. Liam, anybody I, have any questions? I want to see if Liam's got any questions. He's been following me for a while now. We've never spoke. Is there any, any questions that popped up during the session? If he's uh, oh, still just, listening. I think Liam's eating his sandwich. <laughs> he might be away from his <laughs> I'm searching for the mute button. Um, no, nothing that comes to mind, to be honest. I'm um, just taking away loads of value. Um, from what you said there, Greg, um, I know that um, YouTube is something that I'm currently looking at um, for a project that I'm working on. And um, and I guess like the big thing that I'm thinking of at the moment is just keeping that consistency. Um, we get quite a lot of um, live, um, we, we do some live streams um, with some guests on like a, <clears throat> on a talk that happens. Um, and and we've got quite a lot of subscribers and attendees of these live sessions and they're quite interactive uh, with the comments um, but getting people to come and watch the native videos that we're putting up is a little bit more tricky we're not mm -hmm. we're not very consistent with that so hands up to that one um but i guess just consistency is a, a big factor um yeah. i'd imagine you'd say yeah consistency is, is an issue that a lot of like my viewers and my students have problems with uh, i think it comes back to just like not putting too much pressure on yourself like you know, we always try and strive for perfection and to try and put, like Richard was saying, put out things with expensive cameras and, and really going above and beyond. It's like, I think the key to success on YouTube is recognizing our limits, like recognizing our time constraints and, and how much, you know, and, and what our skill set is, and just committing to a format that complements where we are in life. Like, if we only have two hours a week free to make a video, then make a video in two hours don't try and make a video that's actually going to take you 10 hours to make when you only have two hours free so find a format that you can make sustainably and consistently and long term stick to that and and see how it goes and over time you'll get quicker and more efficient and, and get like faster workflows and maybe be able to increase the quality that way or you might find yourself finding more time or more interest to do videos and, and then um, having that more time each week to do it but yeah don't bite off more than you can chew at the start lovely Okay, well, we, we, we've hit bang on. Bruce, Bruce, have you got a question? Oh, you need to unmute yourself. Go yeah, ahead. Th thanks for the contributions, particularly Nadia was very good with her questions because uh, as per usual, someone's asking questions on your behalf. Thank you, Nadia. <laughs> um, I, um, I can't say very much about what my motivations are except because i'm under nda with my businesses um and i wasn't aware that this was going to get recorded so i apologize to everybody if i've been a little bit quiet but <laughs> no, no i would have shared a lot more if it wasn't gonna go 
uh, onto a public uh, platform. But what I can say is that we're working on completely from the start of the process of going to YouTube, into YouTube. And our, our ambition is to um, establish a, a f effectively a channel, a permanent um, broadcasting platform, nice. which can um, support our output, our content that we can, mm -hmm. can, we can build it from nothing to a, a full blown, um, you know, ongoing broadcasting function. So, um, I can say that one of the businesses is a treasure finding company and we've got several hundred finds all over the world in different countries, obviously. Wow. And we, we, uh, we intend to make programs about the, each of those and, and build, uh, and build the, um, curate the, and build and broadcast the, the, um, the, 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 the stories behind all of those. So we have no equipment. We don't even have an account. We don't know. We probably probably opening an account. Isn't that difficult? Probably the equipment isn't necessarily overly complicated. Mm -hmm. um, the content generation structure delivery is probably not overly complicated. Um, but getting it right first time, one of the things that has stuck out is it's worth getting it right first time. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so um, we are completely every single thing that we learn at the moment is brand new to us. And we were going to be working with uh, 21st century Netflix, wow. Disney and all that because they wanted original content. We were even looking at setting our own network up. But obviously, what a waste of time that is. Uh, it's too expensive. We need to move a lot quicker. So we're interested in the whole offering. Monetization is a big key for us uh, because a lot of the fines that we've got around the world, you can't get to them because they're in very sensitive jurisdictions, uh, either conflict zones or not very nice governments and so on. So anyway, so I probably will follow up with all of you at some stage if you get an invite from me anyway. But And then if I think there's something of of interest or if there's something that any of you guys think that I might be able to help you with I'm very happy to receive uh, uh, any communication well, we, I've, 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 because you registered I have everyone's details so if, if everyone's happy I can share them with Greg and Greg you can reach out to people um, or, or or even in the comments if you want to stick in your LinkedIn information that's absolutely yeah, fine. For sure yeah I mean that sounds really exciting Bruce and mm. you're completely right you want to approach these things the right way from the start yeah yeah one because you don't want to waste your time and effort and and, and uh, have to make up for it later on down the line and two you get the best bang for your book with youtube if you come in with the right strategy from from day mm. one too. so yeah if you ever want some guidance through that process and stuff just hit me up in an email and um, we can take it further 100%, yeah that's great no that's it's great cool. oh, easy to find by the way you can have a check out of quite visible i have to be quite visible keeps me alive <laughs> yeah i'll do some googling <laughs> okay guys well thank you very much for um for joining this session it's been really enlightening now i've learned a lot and i hope i hope you guys all have um so yeah so unsurprisingly this this video is going to be edited and posted up to youtube very soon and um, so you can all catch it there um i'll be giving greg a copy as well so that greg can put it on greg's channel if that if, if i don't know what, you, what on earth you want to do with it greg but if you're putting your <laughs> yeah. channel then feel free to um yeah, so, th so thank you very much and um, yeah, have a great day everybody and I'll speak to you all soon.